Hello and welcome to my knitting podcast. My name is Erika, but many of you probably know me as Loare Knits. I decided to do my progress um, report, so to say, podcast style, because there are a lot of knitters that I follow that do these kind of videos, and I find it very, you know, personal, and I can get uh, the feeling they get towards their knitting, and, you know, I, I thought I would give it a try. Um, but first I wanted to make a little introduction so that you get to know me a little better. Um, I was born in the Basque Country, beautiful place, um, but now I live in Barcelona. Uh, I came here to study, but I stayed to work and, well, for love, <laughs> but uh, uh, I mainly came here to study and work because uh, even though it seems that I'm knitting all day, it, this is not true. I'm a scientist, so I spend most of the time in the lab. But when I'm not in the lab, um, it seems that I'm knitting a lot of the time. Um, but I, as I explain in my blog, I, or as I like to say, I am a scientist by day and knitter by night. Or in the commuting, it would be more correct, really. I do a lot of my knitting in the train or in the bus. I learned how to knit, well, um, my mom taught me the basics of knitting when I was really young. So probably when I was like 8, 15 or or something, yeah, some around that age. I probably was bored one day and told my mom, well, can you show me how to knit? Because I knew she knew how to, and although she didn't knit so much, um, anymore. Uh, I figured she could teach me. So she very excitedly took her um, needles and and some yarn and she taught me the basics like how to knit, no, how to cast on, how to knit, how to purl, um, and how to make, you know, a few stitches with a combination of those and I was really excited at the time I think I even uh, made her buy me some yarn and I I think I need uh, a scarf for myself but when I started I, f I felt that it took so long and it was like I, I don't even know if by the time I finished needing that scarf I think I was already bored with it and I don't think I ever got to wear it once uh, probably I got tired of, of it, but, um, you know, and then I never, never need for many years. Um, I feel that in my family, it was my brother who got all the creative and, and crafty and, and artsy genes, and I got, you know, I was much more into books or, um, yeah, reading and science and stuff and learning, but I never thought I would, I was good at doing things with my hands. Um, so if we fast forward, then I moved to Barcelona, I started my university degree. There I was already at, uh, probably finishing my, my undergrad and starting my work in the lab. And then, so I discovered, I rediscovered knitting. So I felt you know, when I was knitting, even if I was struggling because, you know, I didn't know a lot, I felt that it relaxed me so much. And, you know, it helped me after a day in the lab, got, I got home, I took my um, I took my knitting out. And, and basically it was, I know a lot of people say that, but it was like my meditation. Like I really could just relax and not think about anything else, you know, I would go like, Need pearl, need pearl, need pearl, and, and that's it. I will feel like completely relaxed. So I decided to take up knitting again, which was probably the best decision ever uh, because it has helped me through a lot of the stress that comes with um, doing a PhD. So, uh, long story short, here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, last winter, not this one, not this Christmas time, the previous Christmas time is when I started knitting more because I started posting pictures on my Instagram and people would ask, you know, to make something for them or to knit something for them to gift and um, yeah, that's when I started knitting the most and then 
Well, you know, the rest I will tell another day because if not, it would, this would be just uh, a talking podcast and me talking and you probably don't want to see that if you're here just because you probably want to see my knitting. Um, I have to pause because I forgot a few things. I'm back with some coffee. I don't want to make a lot of sound by just by leaving the the cup in the table. Okay, so yeah, this winter, uh, if you follow me on, in Inst on Instagram, you have probably seen that I have knit all the hats. So obviously the first finished object that I want to show you is a hat. Um, I don't have most of them with me because um, many of them were not for me. They were either like uh, I gifted them to friends or to my brother, to family, to a lot of people. But I do have one of them with me. Um, and since it's the only thing that is finished around the house, uh, I wanted to show you. So this is this is the hat. I don't know if you can see. Uh, the pattern is... Yeah, Lace Leaf Hat by Sophie Ting. Uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And so you may think that I have a lot of experience in knitting, but really a lot of the things that you see are my first time doing something. So this hat, obviously it's not my first hat, but it's the first time that I knit lace. Um, and you can see what I mean by lace is this little leaf kind of things okay um so it's the first time that i need lace and i incorporate it in a hat because i feel comfortable knitting hats um, ah yeah i made a swatch to see if i was able to you know with the knit together slip sit knit eh, to make a leaf out of that but uh Two of the leaves were okay, one of them wasn't in the end, I whipped it, so I don't have the swatch, I just have the finished hat. Uh, but I was happy, I was really happy with it. Yeah, I have the tag of the yarn that I use, which uh, I think I have to show, or at least that's what I've seen people do. So yarn is Big Merino by Drops, um, which is 100% Merino wool uh, thread. Um, and it's a run weight, which I think it's a heavy worsted. This is a color weight 8 and you know, you can see it's great. It's not, it's, it has like, um, like a lilac or lavender undertone, you know, like a dusty, pink. Uh, it's gray, but it has this kind of undertone, which is a really nice, nice, nice color if, if you like ne neutrals, as I do. So of course I incorporated the lace and you know I was successful with it. I'm very happy with it that I didn't miss the lace pattern. My, my glasses go down because of course I don't have a nose. Um so yeah, another thing that the pattern had, apart from you know, it's not uh, <laughs> the end is not waved in, is the ribbing. So usually for my hats. Here. There you go. So usually for my hats, I, I like the knit one per one ribbing, which makes um it makes an elastic um, stitch. Um, and this one is also a knit one per one, but it's um it's knitted through the back loop, so it makes like a twisted kind of a stitch. So it's not a, as elastic or stretch. I mean, it's stretchy because the yarn is stretchy and, and I knit very loose, but it's not as the classic knit one per one ribbing that would give you a very tight stitch or, yeah. I wasn't, ex I wasn't um, convinced by it at the beginning, but after seeing the lace pattern and how it flows into the ribbing, I think, I think it's perfect. So I wasn't really happy with it at the beginning, but I understand now so if, if this was like gathered here it would make the the lace look a little weird so i think it's it's very nice so another thing that i discovered with with uh knitting this hat is the wonders of blocking um i have blocked my other garments i haven't knit a lot of things like usually scarves and cows don't need blocking 
uh, or aggressive blocking, but you know, hat sometimes too. When I need the bubble hat uh, by Donna Smith, since it had a lot of color work, I did lightly block that one. Not a lot because it was it sized a little big, but um, I did block it slightly. But usually the way I block my hats is just I put them in a balloon. I balloon, sorry. I just spray water on water on them. I moisturize them and I let them dry within the balloon so that the the ribbing is not stretched. But with this hat, since um, this was needing superwash uh, wool, and when I need it. It's because of the way I knit, since I knit very loose, and also because it had this lace pattern. So here where the, there are two stitches knit together, they were like this, you know, they were coming out of the pattern, so I would have a very textured pattern, like um, very bulky, very, you know, three-dimensional. I don't know what's happening with the light. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the background. Um... So it was nice, but it was, you know, looking all scrunchy and scrambled, and I figured, you know, I need to block this one. But I didn't want to block it aggressively because I need very loose, and it had, like, the right size for a hat. So if I blocked it, since it's very stretchy, I would get a two of a big hat, so it would be too, too big in the end. So I didn't want to block it very aggressively. So this is, a, since it was a super wash traded wool, and even though I... I need with quite a lot of super wash wool I don't usually um, put my finished garments in the washing machine I don't know I think I am afraid of something happening to them but this will this will is ready for that so it's super washy so you can just you know put it in your um, washing machine and not not have a disaster so I decided to see if, if what happened with with this, so I put it in the washing machine in a short cycle with cold water, and then I blocked it just by uh, laying it flat. And you know, I didn't pin it or anything. I just, you know, made uh, made it flat and made it, you know, I did not stretch the ribbing a lot. Just, you know, maybe a little bit upward, like I I tugged it a bit and made sure that the leaves were, you know, evenly or quite spread. And it changed amazingly, of course I don't have to before <laughs> because this is the finished object, but if if you if you wanna see a picture before, I think it's it's on my blog, you can see it the before and after of blogging. So I'm really happy with this and I hope that the person who receives receives it would be happiest one. If you wanna read more on the story of this how you can head over to my blog. I will probably leave the link somewhere. Okay, that's it for finished objects. Um, probably like many other knitters, I have a lot of works in progress and um, not many of them are being finished. So the thing is that now, since the like colder or winter season is over, um, now I cast on a lot of like long projects because um, now I have time to, no, I don't have a lot of time to knit, but probably when I finish my PhD, I will more. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I stopped doing this really short uh, project, like all these hats, and I started needing like more complicated or long things. So I will move now to the works in progress. So the first work in progress that I want to show you is a baby blanket. So this is a gift for a friend whose baby will be uh, do in summer and I'm just hoping that she's not gonna see the podcast because she's not really into me doing so none of my friends are really. so I'm hoping no one that knows me in real life is gonna see this because it's gonna be a little weird okay so this is the baby I don't know if, if this happens to two other um, podcasters or it's just me a lot of people don't know about my um, this hobby let's say so it's a baby blanket and this is not knit, this is crochet, crochet. yeah I don't know how to say this word, but, um, I think it's crochet. Um, I'm not following any pattern, although I have seen some patterns 
very similar to this so if anyone is really interested just let me know and i will give you the directions i am basically well this is what it looks like um, i don't want to put it in my coffee okay so i'm just basically doing the waves it's not a not a chevron it's more of a um, wavy i'm just basically doing the increases by knitting two in the same stitch and then knitting two together two times at the, here at the top and at the bottom and this is what it looks like i'm changing color every four rows so i'm getting this kind of pattern and all the eggs to be waved in Mm. I have a some I never ending summer project which is very similar to this but I was knitting in a in in a more um in a thinner thread and it was taking forever and I always felt like when I crochet crocheted my 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 fabric or my knitting would or my my yeah would grow faster than with knitting because I always feel that I'm much slower at knitting because I need English style, so I'm a thrower, so I always have like to let go of one hand and, and throw the yarn, and it seems to take forever. So for some reason with crochet, it seemed that things were growing faster, but with this um, project, it's... So this is my to-go project, because it's very convenient for me to, you know, if I lose some stitches, to, to just crochet them again. Not the same with knitting. If I lose some stitches, depending on what I'm knitting, I could go mad and have to rip the whole thing. Not always, but with certain things I have. Um, so the thing with it, with this project, or what I'm not thrilled about, is that I underestimated big time how much yarn I needed for this. So I'm knitting this. Um, yeah, I forgot to say that. I need in this in drops cotton merino, which is a 50% wool, 50% cotton thread. And I chose these three colors. So this is, um, I don't know if you see, a gray. I love that the, um, you can see the cotton is not the same color exactly as the, as the merino wool. And it gives, you know, this, I really like this, this kind of thread. So in grey and vanilla, I don't know if you can see the yellow, and of white. So yeah, underestimate. I, I know crochet uses more yarn than knitting, but I, I wasn't expecting to knit so much. So if I'm doing this again, I'm probably knitting it because I found some really nice patterns for baby blankets, you know, with the waves or the chevrons. And, but still, it's very nice, you know, because it's going to be very chunky and, you know, it has a lot of texture. And I think it would be nice. So, the baby is due in summer. And I, when I cast this on, when I decided to do this, I didn't know the, the gender of the baby. So, um, I chose pretty gender neutral colors and I think it would, that would be nice for, for a baby. So, this is my work in progress number one, which is my to-go project when I am kneeling in the bus or in the train. Let me put this away. Okay. A little bit. Uh, Which is getting cold. I hope, I hope I'm not looking a lot to the screen. I don't know. It's a little weird to look at the camera. So please bear with me because this is my first podcast. Second project. <sighs> this is a project of love and hate. So it's a project of love <laughs> because it's my first um sweater or yeah pullover that i'm knitting for me as i told you i haven't knit a lot of things even though you may think differently so i wanted to knit a sweater for me but i didn't want it to be one of these classical knit sweaters so i wanted something original you know um and i found this pattern which is not a ravelry but uh it's called the benjamin pullover and this is by oh where's my notes 
yeah uh, designer is called Aurelie and let's see if I'm gonna say this right because I don't speak French uh, I think her designing brand is called Un Poulet à Petit Pas or something like that which probably means like I don't know something with ten and little steps um, she has some really elegant and beautiful designs and when I saw this this pullover I, I fell in love immediately so this is like a it's neat from the bottom up but then you, it has this little peplum thing and it's knitting the round so since I learned to knit on circular needles I figured that I could knit that so the yarn it calls for uh, she says that you can knit this with uh, double threading some alpaca and kid silk and it, it looked kind of airy but I was going for you know a still more of a flowy and airy fabric so I decided to use another yarn and I chose um, brushed alpaca silk I see the alpaca threads here uh, by Trops brushed alpaca silk I don't, know, I don't know if you can see the fluff of course you cannot touch it but I don't know if you can you know see the fluffiness of it so it's a lovely thread I am in love with it and loving the fabric that it's giving so this is my garment it's quite big at the moment in fact it's too big um, it's not that I may, so I was able to keep gauge. You cannot see because you know it's too big. So right now, I finished the I finished the body, and I am knitting. So this should be like this. So here here is the armhole, and I am knitting. Let's say the right shoulder. Of course, it's beige because I like beige everything. And this time, shaping the 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 neckline here so of course you see with this yarn there's not a lot of stitch definition but i don't think i'm making a lot of holes it's it's looking quite nice i mean i love the fabric that is giving um and it's it's very very light but it's so warm because it has all this um alpaca sound let me show you the thread where is the working yarn here so this is, I'm working it from the center. I don't know if you can see, so there is this silk in the middle and then it has all these um, brushed alpaca. And I don't know if you can see, it's very, very, very light. It's so light that I think 25 grams per skin. Where is it? Here. It gives you 140 meters. So each skein, this is a uh, new skein, is 25, like a cloud. So I love this, you know, because the silk gives it the strength and then the alpaca, which is brushed. You know, it's not your common thread. It gives, you know, sometimes it gets really thick. There you go, I think you can see it there. It gives this fluffiness. So of course I'm having this garment which is a little bit see-through. I don't know if you can see. Maybe here. Yeah. But not so much. So the problem, because I love this, is it's too big. So I so told you I kept gauge with the with the needle size and the and the thread, you know, with the fluffiness and everything. But I think I overestimated my size. So I just figured, you know, this is a French girl. Um, I'm thinking French fashion, they usually um, make their sizes quite small. So I said, so, you know, the middle, the middle, um, uh, the middle size was an M and L. So usually I'm, an, I'm, I'm a large size, not a medium size. So since medium and large were together, I went on and cast on the extra large. So this is what the body, it doesn't even fit in the camera. 
So this is what the body is looking like. So of course I, you know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So this is not the peplum or anything. This is the, the body and then the peplum would open. So this is, of course, it's upside down, but the peplum would open from here, this. So I'm going to have, and it's so stretchy, so I'm not even stretching it. This is a fail, a complete fail. <laughs> I'm so sad because it's lovely. And that's why I'm not knitting on it so much because I think I made it huge. And you know, the more I knit, the bigger it gets. So I don't know what to do with this. Because the thing is that with any other project that we just unravel it and start again, you know, going down the size and go to the A or ASL, AS or ML. But, the thing is that when you knit with this yarn, yes, you can see the stitches. Let me go to the right side. You can see the stitches, but the alpaca fibers get entangled one with the other. And it's really difficult to unravel because, you know, it's not that I'm making any knots or anything. It's just that the, it's getting felted. I think felted is the word I'm looking for just by knitting it so i don't think i will be able to unravel it so yeah it's making the sense that it's supposed to make i just i ex for some reason i didn't measure myself or any of the if i had measured i didn't want it to be small but if i had measured like one of these oversized pullovers that i have at home i would have seen that uh with the m size medium size that would be enough but it's so sad because it's so fluffy and it's exactly the what I was you know looking for regarding the what the fabric looks like. So I'm really sad. I don't know if I I don't know if I won't stop working on it or just um, finish knitting it in the round and maybe do you know like a capelet or something with it and then get more yarn and knit the smaller size but I'm probably sure that I cannot unravel it. So if you have any ideas, please help me. Any suggestions would be welcome because I don't know what to do with it. And I love this yarn and I love this pattern. I was planning on knitting it with a lot of other yarns anyway. But of course, I want to make something that fits. I don't want to you know, make just a rucksack. So this is work in progress number two. You know the hate I love. Put that away and get some coffee. And now work in progress number three. So for those of you who follow my Instagram, you have seen that I have been or that I joined the five shows five days challenge organized by Frenchie from Aroha Knits. Um, that was super fun. Um, I'm not planning on going through that in the podcast, but if you want to see, just let me know. Because I made like a long po uh, blog post about it, so probably you can see that there, and that's it. But, after learning the basic um, about show construction, I decided to start or to cast on a show. So I went through my stash, and I... Um, I took this yarn, you have seen this, this is a sock yarn, um, I wind it by hand myself, I'm very happy with how the ball turned out, this center full ball. Um, this is sock yarn, I, I have to say, uh, besides the um, brush silk pack I which is a very thin thread, but it's worked from 5mm needles, I have never worked with thin yarn before. So this probably means that I'm, you know, getting more experience because I think the more experience you are in knitting, the the smaller or thinner your thread. So this is um, the yarn is from Puppy Put Yarns. Did I say that right? Yeah, it's a sock yarn, so it's a fingering weight yarn, and it's 75 superwash merino wool and 25% nylon, and it's hand dyed. And this is the colorway permanent. So I was lucky enough 
to win this yarn in a giveaway organized by Amelia, I think. Uh, I was so lucky. Indeed, I have been extremely lucky. And I will talk about that, you know, during the, the podcast because I, I have won various giveaways and I have also hosted a few, so I'm really happy to host them because I know how happy me someone feel when we win something but you know I won this hand dyed hot yarn which is beautiful I showed in a video in, in Instagram I hope my my nails are not distracting but here you can see all the colors so you see the blues the light pinks pinks magentas violet I'm not gonna say purple because I don't like purple and I like this yarn very much. So this is all the colors, yeah, more pink. I'm so happy with this. Um, so first, I had this in my stash for a while, but I didn't know what to make with it, and I figured, you know, I asked some people on on Instagram what to do with it, and I, I was thinking either socks because it's sock yarn or a shawl, but. Before I didn't, I mean, I could probably have figured that, but I didn't know how to knit a shawl exactly or how to, you know, what it works for me, what to choose, what shape they have. Uh, so the, the five shows, five days challenge really did help a lot um, on making that decision. So I decided to go for a crescent shaped uh, shawl and it's called the Kaipu shawl by, let me see if I say this correct, by Tina Hutaniemi. It's gonna be, I'm not gonna say it again, I'm gonna have it written somewhere. So I took this hand dyed yarn, so what, after I did the five shows, five days challenge, I realized that, you know, this yarn would look beautiful in a shawl. So when I asked if I should need some socks or some a shawl with them, uh, there's a few people who said socks, and I know um, a lot of people need beautiful socks, but I have never need a sock myself. So I was afraid that I would not do this yarn justice. And also, if I need a sock, I don't wear a lot of socks outside of home. If I need a sock, I want to show it all the time. So you know what, I have to wear sandals. I'm not ready for wearing sandals with sock yet. And I want to show them off all the time. And I think, you know, it would be really sad to have such a beautiful yarn in socks that I would just wear at home and not show to anyone. So I figured I would make a show. And, you know, with all the courage that I gather after the challenge, with all the useful tips that Frenchy from Aroha Needs gave us for show knitting. And with all the support <laughs> from my knitting friends, I decided to cast on a show. Oh, this is going to make a lot of noise. And here it is. So this is Kaipu, as I showed as I told you before. And I love how the yarn is knitting up. So it's a crescent shaped sole, shawl. And you know, it starts with the garter mm, top cast on with only two stitches in the edge, and then it has, you know, it's increasing every row, and it has this eyelet rows here. I already did two. And here you can see, let me see if I don't make a lot of noise. But you can see how the yarn is knitting up beautifully. So here you have the, the violets, the blues, the pinks, and everything is blending together very, very beautifully. So these are a lot more colorful than I would. I'm not going to say where because I'm going to probably wear this, but that I would choose for myself. But it's beautiful and I really, really love these colors. So this is a crescent shape snow shawl. You know, 
okay, probably like this. I think it should be nice. So I'm really happy with this. And the pattern has some, um, I think it's perfect for spring or, you know, even summer nights. Uh, the pattern has, um, I think it's another row of stocking it or another two rows of stocking it now. Blocks of stocking it and, and another eyelet row. And then it has a lace pattern. So first I wanted to see how then the yarn needs up to decide on a color. I'm still inclined towards off-white because I think that the lace pattern would show better in a, in a white uh, thread. But a few people have suggested like maybe a mint or maybe blue. Here you have the minty. I think it has enough pink. I love pink, but I, you know. Um, so we'll see. I haven't decided yet. So probably when I am done with the stockinette and eyelet section, I will take uh, this to my to a yarn shop. I do most of my shopping online, but I I know a few yarn shops, so I might take it there and ask for their advice and even see how their yarns look with this. So I think this is it. I was planning on to, I didn't want to make like a very long uh, podcast. I didn't even think I would be able to talk <laughs> for half an hour, but I have clearly gone over half an hour, so I hope it's not very long for you. And just, you know, if you have any questions or suggestions, and just let me know because this is, of course, my first podcast and it can be greatly improved. So any help would be welcome. And you know, if I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. And if if I get um, feedback enough, I would probably make another one. I mean, I really enjoyed it at the beginning. I was a little bit nervous, but you know, once I started talking about the knitting, it was really it was really fun. Uh, so I really hope you like it and. I don't know when I will be posting another one, but, you know, even a couple of weeks or when I have something to show you. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's where I'm most uh, active right now. So, um, I will leave that somewhere or put it somewhere here in the screen. And I think that's it for today. So, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. And uh, I forgot to look at the camera. So happy knitting. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.